uh, a frustrating campaign. Yeah, I think so. I think it shows um, uh, a good application from the players that um, the attitude going into the last game of the season uh, I, th I thought was very important today, uh, that we needed to get that right. Um, and again, good, good response after going a goal behind, but I thought we started the game okay. Um, and then they played what I call uh, Thursday morning possession football. Uh, we showed the attitude and the application to go and, up, go and go on and win the game. I think the, the response the, uh, for the players having demands put on them. We worked on it in the week that, that we knew how they were going to play and how they wanted to play. Needed to nullify the, how they played and their strengths. Uh, and then we needed to make sure that we implemented our game plan, which was getting on the front foot, playing in the final third, putting balls into their box. We're threat from set pieces and, and we're good when we get on the front foot. But again, sometimes it's, uh, it's the demands that we put on each other and the understanding within the group of what's required individually and collectively. Uh, I haven't seen every game this season, but the work rates today seemed especially high. Um, certainly a lot higher than we saw against Yeovil last week. Um, you've also said in interviews that the side haven't been able to play uh, playing the style of football you'd like them to play. But today was quite encouraging from my perspective. I, I just wondered if you felt that you saw a side today that was giving signs of what you want to play at Northampton next season. Well, I think we, we want to play a high tempo game um, and we want to play in the opposition's half. The, uh, that's the fundamentals uh, of, of what we want to do. And sometimes there's the decisions and options that players need and it's, uh, it's about players identifying and picking the right options at the right time. And sometimes you have to learn by your mistakes. Today, uh, even, even in the first half, you know, there was times we could have got in, in behind them in the first half and that gets us on the front foot. It's, uh, when you're playing football, there's nothing better than being on the front foot. And, and, and again, it sets the tone, it even sets the tone when you're going forward and you're putting good balls in behind teams. The back four squeezes up, not only because the back four are squeezing up, they're on the front foot. So the, the ball bypasses in midfield, then they're on the front foot and it sets the tone. It keeps, then you can have wave after wave uh, of attacks. And again, at this level, uh, you find them, if you put the ball in and around the final third enough, you will get rewards. Was there anything that uh, supporters can read into your team selection today? especially the players that didn't make it into the matchday squad? Again, supporters will always read uh, and have their own opinions. Uh, again, I think the important thing today, as it's been uh, after every game, the important thing is talking about the players that played today, the players that were involved today, and I think that's the important thing. Yeah, there's going to be lots of speculation, there'll be lots of talk. I think a lot of that will be clearer after Monday when I have the meeting with, with the players. The focus now for the, for the players, uh, like I just uh, addressed them, they've got two more their responsibilities they've got the end of the season due tomorrow where they've got to uh, conduct themselves in the right manner uh, and then they've got the meeting with myself uh, uh, on the Monday. Mm. And there were plenty of uh, representation in terms of the academy today as well, three players starting that were part, part of the feature of the club's academy previously. Uh, who, What impressed you most about their performances today? Again, I think it's important now that we talk about uh, those players that, that were involved today. Uh, people from our teams, uh, a great decision, but in my mind it's the right decision to give them the opportunity um, to showcase what they've been trying to do and what they've been working on in training. Uh, I think uh, Jay Williams, again, will learn from every game that he plays, he will learn and he will pick up the artistry, the artistry that's required about being the centre-back. Sometimes it's not all about winning first contact, sometimes it's the understanding, the game understanding, the positional understanding. Uh, him today playing uh, alongside Charlie Gould, one side of him, Aaron Pierre, the other side of him, they would have given him good guidelines. Uh, again, Scotty Pollard within uh, within 10 minutes to change the, change the shape of the formation. Uh, we sw swap, uh, swapping over uh, Sam Foley um, uh, and uh, and Scotty. Uh, and again, Scotty's got good touches, good neat touches, forward-thinking player. Uh, would have uh, first 10, 15 minutes. I thought he was getting uh, not getting close enough to them, and they were allowed to play training ground football, uh, whereby they were popping it around, good little triangles. Uh, and we couldn't get a touch of the ball. Put Sam Foley back in there, uh, destroys play, breaks play up and gets on the front foot very quickly. Um, so no, yeah, uh, very, very pleasing today. And again, you've got Sean McWilliams, uh, he's been biding his time to get back in the team. He's had a, a niggling injury. Uh, he's had to adjust to new demands that are being put on him in and simplifying his game. I, I want Sean to be um, being able to break play up, retain possession, or get us on the front foot very quickly. Taking, uh, limiting his decision making on the ball, and, and, that, and that's not meant as a discredit. It's when you find good players that play a higher, uh, higher up the pyramid. They play one and two touch football, and they, and they play four. That's what we're trying to encourage Sean to do.
and your set piece play was impressive as well. Had plenty of chances from corners, especially. You've scored more goals than any other side in the League Two from corner positions, uh, corner situations, I should say, this season. So, is that the part of the template as well? You want to carry on implementing next season that organisation from set pieces and the, being clinical from them as well. Yeah, if you're going to be a team that wants to operate in the final third, now if we're not, if we're not able to get clear strikes at goal. Um, or crosses into the box, we, we are going to earn a lot of throws uh, and a lot of set pieces for, from corners. The important thing is then we need to be creative, we, we need to be brave and we need to be clinical. And, uh, and again, yeah, I think we scored 40-odd you know, uh, percent of our goals have come from set pieces, but it's, it's something that we work at. We, we, uh, so no, we do, like, you do find a lot of teams um, and a lot of players get a little bit disinterested when uh, when you come Thursday, Friday and you're doing set piece routines. But again, the more we do them now, it's becoming standard practice. And again, that's something that we need to grow on. The, the games can will be won, can be won uh, next season uh, by set pieces. I think this season, uh, as a group, we've, uh, we've, won, we've won some games, but we've, uh, we've drawn a lot of games. And, uh, if we're going to turn those draws into wins, uh, that gets us then operating in the, in the top ten. Indeed. And just final question from me. Uh, it's, it's a bottom half finish this season. Frustrating, disappointing. You mentioned previously in interviews about those that push for a playoff place at one point earlier in uh, the season. Where do you think the, this cobbler side will... Where do you expect this cobbler side to be 12 months from now? Again, I think the important thing is so where we where we finish is our starting point to, to aim for for next season. You know, so again, there's, and there's, all, there's going to be lots of different uh, incidentals uh, that are going to come into the into the factors for next season. Uh, there is going to be new players, and it's how quickly can we gel those players together? Uh, how can we get them to buy into the philosophy and the ethos that we're trying to uh, trying to create? And again, you know, we need to go on runs within the season where we go seven, eight, ten games, back to back wins that, that can propel you. And again. Timing of those is important, and again, we'll have a full pre-season. Um, people don't, sometimes people don't under, uh, can underestimate what uh, it's not easy coming into a football uh, changing uh, and implementing your, your philosophy. You can't do it straight away. You have to identify what's in there and what is the best way of getting results for that, for that group of players. And, and then you need a few uh, transfer windows, and then you can start bringing in the philosophy, a style of play, and bringing in your own players. Enjoy the summer. Thank you very much. See you.